All right, we're continuing talking about geometric vectors, and we have recently defined very natural rules for adding vectors together and multiplying them by numbers, and that was great. But when you're studying mathematics, simply inventing new operations is not enough. You must also make sure that they satisfy some essential properties. And that's exactly what we're going to do in this video. We will make sure that the operations we came up with satisfy commutativity, associativity, and distributivity. And this is a crucial step when studying mathematics in a disciplined way. And it will also give us a chance to interact with geometric vectors, which is exactly the kind of practice we need. And these properties look innocent enough, but when we try to interpret them geometrically, things will get quite involved. And that's perfect. That's exactly what we're looking for. That's the kind of practice we need. So we're going to start with commutativity. A plus B equals B plus A. But what does it mean geometrically? Let's take a look. In words, this is saying that the sum of two vectors does not depend on the order of the terms. That's algebraically, but geometrically, here's what it means. I'm illustrating it right here. A plus B means that you want to take a journey according to the vector A first, and then from the point you ended up at, take another journey according to the vector B. That's A plus B. That's the left-hand side. Go according to A first, then according to B. The right-hand side says go according to B first, and then according to A. And equality means that you will end up at the same point. Well, let's confirm that that's actually true. Here we go. We have to start at the same point at the origin and first go according to the vector B. I guess that would be right around here. Is that about right? This is a better point. So first go according to the vector B and then from the point where you ended up go according to the vector A and see where you end up. So now this was a trip according to the vector A and did we end up at the same point? Well, we sure did. Now, does this constitute a proof of this property? I don't think so, but it's not the proof that we're after in this video. We just want to interpret these rules geometrically and make sure that, at least on an intuitive basis, that they hold. And I think we accomplished this, that task quite admirably in this case, because we see a perfect parallelogram, so of course you end up at the same point as you did before. So A plus B equals B plus A, and commutativity is confirmed. So I'll put a check mark here. And I do want to point out that this somehow looks a little bit more complicated than this, because this is the kind of property that we're so used to when working with ordinary numbers. 5 plus 3 equals 3 plus 5, that we don't even give it a second thought. But when you arrive at new objects, with new operations, you have to make sure that this property holds, and it's, I use the word involve and I, involved, and I stay by it. That looks pretty involved, but not too complicated. All right, so we're done with commutativity. Let's move on to associativity, and there will be something very interesting that I'll have to say about associativity. So associativity involves three trips, three vectors. One trip according to the vector A, one trip according to the vector B, and one trip according to the vector C. And what the left-hand side means is that you're first looking at the aggregate effect of the two trips according to the vectors A and B, and then you tack on a trip according to the vector C, or alternatively, you combine B and C together into a single trip, and then tack on the vector A. And it doesn't matter whether you tack it on on the left or on the right because of commutativity. If we didn't have commutativity, then we would really have to pay attention to the order of the terms. But because we do have commutativity, we don't have to pay attention to the order of the terms. And what associativity will tell us, we'll discuss that in a moment once we make sure this is correct, is that the order of the operations doesn't matter. That you can do this plus first, then take the aggregate and do this plus, or alternatively, you can do the second plus first, and then do the first plus. So that's what associativity means. It's sort of like commutativity, but for the order of operations. And it says it doesn't matter whether you do this plus first, or this plus first. 
And once again, this looks perfectly innocent and something that we're completely used to when dealing with ordinary numbers. But when we will now interpret this geometrically for geometric vectors, things will get interesting. So let's take a look. I think using a new color would help us. Uh, let's go with this purple. Okay, what is a plus b? a plus b is this vector right here. Let me make sure I don't miss. All right, not great, but not too bad. So this right here is a plus b. a plus b, according to our rule of addition. So that's a plus b. And now to a plus b, we have to add c. We do it according to the same rule. Here is a plus b, here is c. So a plus b plus c goes from the origin to the tip of the vector c. There you go. This is a plus b plus c. All right. Now let's interpret the right-hand side and see what we get. On the right-hand side, we must first combine, orange chalk, b and c. So two trips, one according to b, one according to c, we have to capture as a single trip. In other words, as a single vector. And it, of course, starts here because that's where the trip B starts and ends up at the tip of the vector C. So it becomes this vector right here. And do you see how the drawing is getting just a little bit messy? I think at the very least it looks a little bit more complicated than this did. So this vector right here is B plus C, is B plus C, okay. And now we have to add A, to the vector we just established, b plus c. So let's see what we get. So we start once again here, a plus this orange vector b plus c, and we end up at the very same point. So associativity holds. So I think we've convinced ourselves, ourselves of this beyond any shadow of a doubt. And thanks to associativity, because we got one in the same vector every time, we can simply call it a plus B plus C without any parentheses. Uh, let's see, A, this would be called A plus B plus C. And we don't have to put any parentheses anywhere because we can either do this plus first or this plus first and all of that is thanks to associativity. And in every case, it's the vector that starts at the tail of the vector A and ends at the tip of the vector C. So we have kind of extended our rule for addition of vectors to multiple vectors. And associativity is key when we have to add three or even more vectors. Number one, we know that the order doesn't matter of the vectors themselves. And associativity tells us that the order of the terms doesn't matter. So all we have to do if we have three or more, or 10 or 100 vectors, is stack them like this on top of each other, tip to tail. And then the sum of all of those vectors is the vector connecting the tail of the very first vector with the tip of the very last vector. So pretty simple. Okay, the one thing I wanted to mention about associativity is that it's actually more fundamental in some ways than commutativity. You probably think of commutativity as a little bit more fundamental because you never think about the order of terms. Well, in linear algebra, when we talk about matrices and matrix multiplication, we will learn that those objects and that operation satisfies associativity and does not generally satisfy commutativity. So you will learn to think of associativity as, much, as a much more fundamental property than commutativity. There are lots of useful objects in applied mathematics and engineering and uh, everyday life that don't commute, but satisfy associativity. And even though there are mathematicians who study non-associative operations, I actually don't know of any. Every operation that I use in my research is associative. So at least I think of associativity as much more fundamental than commutativity. Okay, so that's commutativity and associativity. Now let's talk about distributivity, which, uh, is less fundamental, but without distributivity, there is no linear algebra. So let's make sure distributivity holds. Distributivity says that if you have two vectors, A and B, 
and some number alpha. And we'll use three halves if we have space for it. Yeah, I think we do. We'll use alpha will be three halves, but it has to work for any number. So if you have two vectors and you multiply each one of them by the same number and then add them together, you will get the same vectors adding the two vectors together and then multiplying the sum by three halves. So distributivity is also about the order of operations or about the order of operations not mattering. And the operation here is multiplication by number and addition. So it says it doesn't matter whether you multiply these vectors by the same number first and then add them together, or whether you add the vectors together first and then multiply by a number. So all three of these properties have something to do with the order not mattering. The order of the terms doesn't matter, the order of the operations doesn't matter, and finally this is similar to associativity, the order of the operations doesn't matter, except here the two operations are multiplication by one and the same number, followed by addition, or you can do the addition first, and then multiply by the number. So let's actually see what it looks like when we interpret it geometrically. It will be very interesting. And actually in both of these cases we said yeah we're convinced that the property holds. Well here it will be a little bit less convincing. It actually takes, excuse me, a little bit of experience and knowledge of geometry to know that this holds. But I'll do my best to convince you on an intuitive level because that's much more important. So here's my vector A. Here's my vector b. Let's go for the right hand side first and add them together and then we'll use alpha three halves. So here is a plus b, white chalk is fine, a plus b. Okay, here's a plus b. Let's write it in. a plus b. So that's a plus b and now we're agreeing that alpha equals three halves. So we need to Lengthen this vector by about 50%. Now I'm going to my purple chalk and here it is 50% longer. So this right here is alpha, I'll write down three halves, of A plus B, which is the right hand side. Now let's evaluate the left hand side, which means make every, each one of these vectors three halves longer. So here is 3 halves a, and then, okay, we might as well write it in, 3 halves a. And then to 3 halves a, I have to add a vector that's 50% longer than the vector b, points along the same direction, but 50% bigger. So here we go. This is 3 halves b. And did we arrive at the same point? Well, when I was drawing it, I made sure we arrived at the same point. But are you convinced that this drawing is actually accurate? Well, I hope that you're convinced on at least an intuitive level that it makes sense that this path is the same as this path, then elongated by 50%. So my only goal is to convince you on an intuitive level and I hope that I achieved that. So we can now put a check mark next to distributivity, the least fundamental of these properties, but just as essential to linear algebra. So the three properties have now been interpreted geometrically, things got a little interesting, and uh, confirmed. So we now have these three properties and we'll use them throughout the course. And these properties aren't just nice to have, they're absolutely essential. The subject of linear algebra wouldn't even exist if these properties didn't hold. And if you look at some more formal approaches to linear algebra, for example, if you look up vector spaces on Wikipedia, and for the love of God, don't go to Wikipedia to learn linear algebra or any other subject, that's an aside. Well, you would discover that uh, these three properties are actually listed as requirements or axioms for objects to be considered vectors. And not just these three requirements, but a handful more, some of which would be more confusing than helpful to discuss. For example, one of the requirements states that if you multiply a vector by the number 1, then the vector remains unchanged. And that property requirement is so self-evident, at least when we're talking about geometric vectors, that it would be confusing why we need to bring it up in the first place or discuss it. So I'm very happy that we're not taking a formal approach to linear algebra, but instead we're trying to discover the essence of the subject. 
And so we're very happy to have these properties and know their geometric interpretation.